Said to uh, said, well, if you know who that is, you know he played on um, played on Court of the Crimson King. Oh well, yeah. And all that, you know, and it was like, whoa, you know, respect. I mean, there's just so many excellent people out there. I, I think you know we're looking at a music, you know, a music world that has changed considerably. You know, it's no longer bound. Okay, it's no longer bound by youth, but it's kind of what you know. I, I touched on earlier on about mm. we're in this kind of about independent labels, how they're going to be like the savior of of the music industry, because in many ways they're the ones who've embraced, embraced the whole idea of you know M MP3s, downloads, those kind of things. Because you can have a, a little label, and you know you just find the stuff you like, and you you can put it out there, and you don't initially have to go to all the costs of pressing up vinyl or making pressing up uh, CDs and things. But um, they are like the conscience of the music industry, you know, because for instance, like, you know, Sony, 70% of their revenue is generated by Simon Cowell. Now that's 70% of huge revenue. And so no one has any desire to stop that. No one has any desire to turn it around. And why should they? But my argument is people have lost sight. There used to be light entertainment industry and there was a music industry, you know, and yeah, there was crossovers, and, you know, the Val Dunicans would make their records and the Terry Wogans would make their records. And But now the light, light entertainment has taken over. You know, to me, the X Factor is no more relevant. In fact, maybe in some ways less so than, say, Sunday night at the London Palladium was. And I have these horror the memories of growing up as a sort of, like, 14, 15, you know, when you were just sort of too young to go out and have it large on a Saturday night, where you'd be stuck home with your parents, you know, and, OK, this is the day when the family only had one telly, if thou, and three channels, or, you know. And, but the weekend nights were light entertainment, weren't they? They were like, you know, Bruce Forsyth, or, or you know, well, Morkel and Wise was kind of that kind, but, you know, all the same, it was, it was nothing. It was a nothing kind of thing. It's like the Rolling Stones refused to go round on yeah. Sunday night along the road with the letters. Yeah, which was and they dropped the punks. Which was brilliant, they you know. Told the pops, didn't they? Yeah, but so did the Stones. They weren't told the pops. Yeah. They went on, you know, because they were relevant. You know, the people watching it. Yeah. That's what you did. You yeah. didn't then have to stand at the end of the top of the pops and wave at everybody. <laughs> you know, you you went on and you played your record. Yeah. But <laughs> but the thing is, X Factor is no different to one of those kind of like entertainment shows. Yeah, you know, because it's Saturday like, night. And mums and dads and my mum like. Yeah, my dad likes all that, you know, Britain's Got Talent and all that, and I mean, you kind of, yeah, I but I mean, what does it say done. about all those people, you know, that, who was the other one, Opportunity Knocks, wasn't it, yeah, in uh, my day, with, um, but it didn't, it didn't have the same, you agree, obviously, obviously the same, because you have that whole, mm. with X Factor, you're going to have this whole series, which is geared to making a mm. Christmas number one, you know, and geared to making the person at the end of it a star, or this whole kind of Susan Boyle thing where, you know, I used to work for Music Week, and I was really kind of quite sad to see last week's episode, last week's magazine, which costs nearly five pounds now, given over to just pretty much X Factor stuff, and you kind of think, well, that's the problem with the music industry. There's not enough people talking about other things going on. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of very exciting music out there still. Um, a lot of bands. 
ploughing furrows, which, you know, have originality and style and talent. People like us, who have been around the block several times, will also automatically, you know, my teenage daughter who's, you know, works a rough trade, has great ears for music, will, you know, will probably end up running a major label, I should imagine. And, you know, not just because I'm a proud father, because she's got it up here. But she does get exasperated with me loads of times, because I go, wow, I really like this band. There's, they're a bit like, there's a bit of velvet in there. And it's like, why don't you shut up with that? You know, of course there's going to be a bit of that in there, because they live in the modern world. But, you know, and I have to kind of quickly come down and say, well, actually, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, one is invariably the sum total of your influences. And if all the influences are pretty good, then what's coming out the other end is going to be pretty good as well. And that's what I feel. I think, you know, okay, mainstream telly is never going to, never gave us the influences we needed, you know, to make up. We had to go out and find it. And there is still um, a breed of youth who will go out and find it. It's also Rick Wakeman said that the best band in the world are still out there and haven't been discovered or promoted yet. Yeah. Because nobody's bothered to find them. Well, because they don't actually fit in. You know, it's like that whole record label thing, you know, during the punk days it was like, go out and find me our version of the Sex Pistols. Or, or you know, in suddenly everyone wanted to sign a new Spandau Ballet or a new Duran Duran. And, and then in Britpop it was the same, so you know, if you couldn't get Blur, you signed Shed 7, you know, oh, 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 or Ocean Colour Scene. Well, are they looking for a new Susan Ball now, are they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're trawling the special needs <laughs> classes. Oh, is that politically incorrect, I think, but you know. When I was teaching back in 76, and Punk came out, and that Bill Grundy show you were talking about, all my kids in Camberwell, white kids and black, said, did you see those stupid punks on telly last night? Yeah. And then three weeks later, they're all coming in with... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was all... I mean, it was art school, though, wasn't it? I mean, it, even though they weren't technically art school, I mean, Glenn was, I think, but art schools and that do drive a lot of it. Yeah, I think Old yeah. Drury had safety pins before it always happened, didn't he? Well, Richard Hell. on the island. Yeah. yeah, Richard Hell, Voidoids... You know that that you know I I was always quite a, quite a big fan of the New York punk scene. I think we did a gig with the Clash at um, the Clash from Burning Roses.